god, my glasses are terrible. So we are waiting for the fourth match of the 2015 Creator Invitational um, between Starstorm and Zoo. It should be pretty interesting. Match oh, that is feedback. I gotta stop having this feedback. No, stop. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm cleaning my glasses because the match hasn't started yet. Um, sudden running. Um, in case you didn't know, the tournament bracket so far, Justin uh, beat James, but James is not out of it yet. He plays Colossus in the loser's bracket. Sean is, or uh, I, I beat um, Colossus, and I'm facing Justin in the next round. I'm gonna die, but it was, <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's happening. And then uh, Jerry beat Jermel but Jamel is going to be playing the loser of this match, and the winner will be playing Jerry Shen in the next round. So it should be interesting and good to watch. Um, I was a little short on time, it's not the weekend, but... Ah, and there we go. It is not showing up yet. One second. There we go. So this is Starstorm3, who runs a YouTube channel at. Uh, I should really have these things up, but I'm pretty sure if you just Google Starstorm3, yep, um, at YouTube slash Joshua Lee. is his channel and Zoo. Zoo doesn't have a YouTube channel or Twitch, but he gives weekly lectures on OGS and we are ready into this game. Okay, so S Starstorm is opening with the facing 34 points, Mukai Komoku, and Zoo is opening with an Orthodox on the right. It's really strange to see this combination together. I don't really see it too often in professional play, but um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, as a standalone opening. I'm kind of curious. Sorry, I'm clicking around a lot. Okay, so I'm kind of curious how Starstorm's planning to deal with this. Ah, so he just goes for the simple wedge. Normally this wedge, if the D17 stone is on a 4-4 point, is not considered as good because black can approach from F17 and, a, and then play R12 later to force white to back off and then build a Moyo at the top. But since black can't approach from f17 in this case, or it wouldn't be too great to approach from that way, uh, because the 3-4 point's not facing that way, um, then this opening's pretty good. Oh, but he's approaching anyway. It's kind of interesting. So, what black is hoping, or is planning to do, is if um, white backs off at d15, then black can play r12, right? If black plays r12, then white has to defend his stone, usually jumping to r7, and then black can play k16 and build a big moyo at the top. In this case, it's not as good as the normal situation, though, because if um, the upper left was a 4-4 point, then black could uh, go further at f17, and threats in the corner, so the exchange isn't as good for white. But it'll be interesting to see how um, Zoo handles this strategy and how Starstorm manages his uh, or has stars from Hales is ready and how Zoo is going to manage this framework. I'm just quickly going to put up a short blip. Mm -hmm. I really should have all this stuff organized before, but since today isn't. Um, the weekend I just got home from work and like 
from here. <laughs> uh, okay. So, let's see how things are developing. Yeah, so again, Black is going for this strategy of building a Moyo at the top. Um, black could have backed off. If black backed off at K16 first, then white might approach at R14 or R13, preventing the big um, kind of two-sided framework. So it's going to be interesting to see. Um, so, the, so the R12 move is well-timed, and that's kind of the strategy that black is going for. But making this D12 uh, G16 approach is usually not a good um, way to handle the left. Even against the Chinese Fuzeki, you don't really see it as often anymore. Um, although in that case, the response for white uh, usually involves an attachment at F16, but since white doesn't have a stone at R11 or R12, this is totally fine for black. I'm kind of curious. I personally feel like black has a lot of weaknesses here. Normally, um, black could lean immediately at Q8 and Q10 to build a bigger framework and kind of cover the R14 weakness. But in this case, he doesn't have time since he has to insert a move at K16 to defend the stone here. So I'm a little curious how this is going to work for him. Hmm. Now, White has to consider how he's going to handle the situation too. Starstorm could jump at P10 to start preventing um, any to help fortify his group and prevent these kind of leaning moves that Black has. Um, but the consequence of that is that it's a little bit slow. That is surprising to me. Um, this corner enclosure is very kind. Of, it's, it's kind of neglect, not accounting for Black's plan. But it's a very big move. But I'm not sure if it's really um, the. It, it feels a little odd to me. Uh, it, it is a very large move, and this is a Joseki that they're playing on the right. Uh, maybe he thinks that because the G16 approach isn't as um, efficient as it would be approaching a 4-4 point, that he could play a little bit um, more territory oriented and not have to deal with this Moyo as soon. Now, here's an interesting uh, little situation. White, for the Joseki normally plays P7 to make sure his group is totally alive. If white ignores playing P7, then black can play P7. Uh, okay, so white's gonna push. White's trying to get Sente here, right? He's trying to form this um, ladder, but yeah, black Khan is to prevent that. Um, if white isn't able to capitalize on these exchanges, I don't know if this cutting point is really that valuable. Maybe, maybe it's valuable. White wants to either leave this cutting point, so now if black fortifies the top somehow, white will cut at N9, or at least aim at that Aji. But this Moyo is getting pretty big, and black, um, if Zhu can get a move at Q17, this corner and the top are very solid, and it's pretty hard for white to, uh, deal with that, I feel. On the other hand, white does is sticking out a lot of points on the left, but this Moyo is pretty big. If we do a quick count, this upper left is like 15, and this bottom left is... 12, so together it's like 27 points. I think just these, this area here between the two stones is 28, right? So that, this this quarter part alone is, you know, equal to the two corners. If black can descend here, this area here, this is three by six, seven, eight, 24. Even descending here is, you know, equivalent to these two, and then black has another corner and the rest of the moyo. I feel like. Um, Zoo is trying very hard to try to figure out a way to end Incente, but uh, these exchanges, they're not bad, but they feel like maybe um, they might be helping White a little more, but Zoo really wants to try to get Sente while not having this N9 cutting point hanging over his head. But it seems a little difficult. Uh, on the other hand, this N6 move still leaves open this push at N07. Uh, if white blocks and black can cut in Sente. So now, even if um, white tenekis, 
The situation could be a little bit dangerous unless black white's just willing to let black cut through his shape. White could if uh, if black pushes at o7, white might back off to p6. Um, if white blocks and black will target, white takes and black will hunt it. Black's not going to just go up to the two stones, he wants to cut the two groups. So if he backs off to p6, then black takes. There's still this hunt it at q6 has to worry about, so black can profit and sente, get at least four points and kill the eye shape for white and make his center a lot thicker, although it's pretty thick already. Uh, I'm not really certain about this strategy, but we'll see how it uh, continues from here. I'm a little bit curious what Bat, or, yeah, what Bat's saying on his side, um, but if I turn on, I, ha I have a stream up, but if I uh, listen to it, it'll the audio will bleed into this one, so I figured having the two commentaries separate would be good. And then we can, uh, I'll watch his um, commentary later. But I am a little bit curious what he's saying. Hmm. So anyway, what else is there to talk about? I think right now White has to decide, maybe he could try to get R5. It's really difficult to um, handle this shape. I feel like after white push at o8, his best bet was after black play. Actually, after black played, I don't know. It's hard. It's really difficult. I think instead of making these exchanges, if white wanted to try to get sente, he should have just taken sente after um, black played pulled back to o9. Even though it leaves this really severe counterattack for black later at p7, white won't die. Oh, okay. So black. So white, so Starstorm does decide to play elsewhere. Um, it's so is Zoo gonna Zoo probably will defend first before trying to take advantage of these cuts. Uh, it's possible that he could try to take advantage of it first, but if he doesn't get Senti out of it um, after White settles, having these having White have two moves uh, in his Moyo will definitely cost him a lot of points. He can settle pretty easily. Hmm. This move is also a little strange to me. I would have thought he would have invaded maybe Q17. Although Q17 is a little, I guess a little too much in the corner, so Q18. The only reason is usually you see this two space, uh, I mean this kind of exchange when white can extend three spaces and make a better base. I also feel like this is a little bit the wrong direction. The top is still open to a slide at G18. So maybe going to the corner would have been good too, but now Starstorm has to figure out a way to handle these since he invaded really deeply. It's not a bad choice, but I personally would have preferred a different method. Um, L18 is good. Uh, he block Zoo isn't trying to make territory, but he doesn't want um, Starstorm to have the option of playing K17 or K18 to settle easily. So even though it kind of fixes the shape a little, it's important for keeping White's group weak. I wonder from here how exactly. Um, He plans to handle this. The knight's move at L14 would be a normal type of approach, but it doesn't feel like. Well, black definitely wants to apply pressure, right, somehow? And if he plays anything um, from the right hand side, even though it would build points, white can easily escape to the center, or to the left hand center. And it feels like it's a little difficult for black to get adequate compensation. Black took the corner, but that was already kind of his. These exchanges don't really build points because White still has G18. So Black has to try to really create um, some pressure on White and try to figure out a way to profit. Seems like the leaning move at L17 is probably the easiest way so that he can build some center thickness and then try to either use that thickness to reduce or um, maybe get a little bit in the center later. Uh, Black could also try to Teneki capitalize on the bottom right since White left it. But if White later gets K15, the shape be becomes really good for White and really painful for Black. That's an interesting peep. Um, of course White will connect, there's not really any options from there. It removes some options like the attachment at N15 though, so it might be a good exchange that it might not, might not be. I'm a little curious why Zoo decided to input that there. It also makes L14 a lot harder to play, and maybe K14 is now more um, 
Boswell? Oh, okay. So the reason I said it, uh, L14 is a little less likely is because after M16 is in place, K15 becomes uh, much more dangerous since white could cut at L16. Before this exchange, um, black would have a tiger's mouth, right? So white wouldn't be able to play L16 after uh, the cut. After white, K15, L15, the cut. Um, white couldn't play L15, but after this exchange he can. That becomes a lot more difficult to manage than black shape beat split. Um, but white just pushes. So he's going to save that Aji for later. He's probably looking at O15 to try to capture the peep, the peeping stone. And if he captures that, it seems like he might be alive locally. He probably wants to live without fixing the outside shape too much so that black doesn't get too strong. Uh, so far it feels like, it, depending on what happens in the bottom right, it feels like what, uh, white got a slightly better opening than black. I'm actually a little bit, a bit uh, surprised by Q18. Q18 is a move you play to gain points um, and make yourself solid, but if you want to attack more severely, uh, which is probably what black wants since white came into his moyo, Q17 is the more um, severe move. On the other hand, maybe black figures that like he has enough points. You know, this corner is really big and he has another corner here. These two are the same shape and then this corner is the same as this. Um, black's not actually behind in territory, so it doesn't, but it just feels like white um, managed to pull a, like, kind of get a pretty easy invasion. Uh, nonetheless, though, black's position overall, I guess, is not bad. If he can get Sente to come on to the left side, or come back here, I think um, Zeus still stands a very good chance of winning this. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm glad um, someone is watching this stream. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm a little bit... Um, surprised at how this game is turning out. Both players are playing pretty solid. I, if I were Zoo, I would really want to come back and uh, test how White's going to respond to 07. If he, if White's going to like try to make Sabaki with R5, or not exact. It's, this doesn't seem to be a clean way to make shape. But he wants to settle himself first. And of course, P16 is a move you have to answer. Otherwise, the White can um, press into the press the right side a bit and make shape which is a little bit too good for him. Hmm. So here, I guess, Zu is thinking about whether or not he could should double Hane or to extend. If he double Hane's um, and White goes after the 014, so Natari and then Atari, that leaves the cut at 016, and then he could take these three. But at the same time, even after inserting the cut and defending, then Black will... Um, have to take Gote to save the 014 stone, unless he doesn't really care about the center area. Um, so now Starstorm is probably going to defend. Oh, really? Starstorm's going to go for the exchange. Uh, that seems a little risky to me, though, because now he's losing all the uh, all of his eye shape at the top. Oh, he's just going to connect. Right, I'm silly. But Zoo can um, take away the eye shape at the top and Sente. Right. So now 017 is forced, and the Atari at P19. White takes. Then black can play P13 um, or N13 to take away the eye in the center, and Zoo is very uh, solid in the center. So it, seem, it seems a little bit dangerous, but also a, it's also a very aggressive plan by Zoo. If it backfires, Zoo gives up a lot of points, um, and it could be very dangerous. I'm not entirely sure how Starstorm plan to de plans to deal with the situation. I don't think he has time to answer 018. Um, he might want to just try to force something at like Q13 first, or R13 to probe how Black's going to respond or try to jump out. If He, he has to figure out how to solidify, solidify the center first before taking points. Yeah, this is exactly what I thought um, he should do. Be, or that starts on my do because answering is uh, too slow, right? Because if it's if it was to take an Iancente, it'd be fine, but it's, since it's Gote, it'd be too slow. So how does this push change the situation? Zoo can no longer play N13, but the P13 Atari is still there. So even if he backs off, probably Starstorm's thinking if Zoo backs off, then he has to do something to defend P13. 
Um, yeah, that would probably be how it looks. I wonder, but Zhu, even if he backs off, he, it, this is a good exchange for him. He builds um, strength in the center, and he hasn't uh, really made any too big a loss by making these exchanges yet. This exchange in the center is um, profitable for him, and these two stones, even though it's a slight territory loss, is also profitable. Starstorm um, answering the double Hana with his Atari is a really strong fighting spirit, but it's very dangerous for both. Um, so now, if Starstorm comes back to 017, Zoo will still Atari, and then probably play P13. After he, um, that, I still, it still seems kind of iffy whether um, Starstorm has the shape to make a second eye. So he probably has to play something like Q13 or maybe P12, something around here to try to force uh, Zoo to play something before coming back. Yeah, so. So now Zoo is left with a kind of difficult question. Um, does he take the three stones or does he defend the side? If he defends the side, for sure Starson will come back and take the two stones, but at least Zoo can take Sente to play somewhere else. But he already made... Um, it, it. The exchanges aren't bad for one way or the another, one person or another, but when you're strong in an area, uh, fixing the shape is usually better for your opponent. This is a nice exchange. Maybe. Um, it seems a little. So, so Zoo's saying if uh, Starsum connects, he's going to take the three stones and kill this whole group. He's basically all in at this point. Um, Zoo, if Starsum takes the two stones, of course Zoo will play P13, taking away the eye. It's a little bit dangerous. I mean, it's been dangerous the whole time. I'm not quite sure. If there's a way out for this for Starstone. Starstone's best um, option is to try to exploit this tiger's mouth, the broken tiger's mouth shape, because R13 or uh, Q12 are both um, Aji rich uh, kind of moves for white. Even if um, Zoo still has a chance to back out by playing R13, but it's a little bit. Uh, feels like P12 might have been a bad exchange then. If, but it, so Zoo sticking with his plan would normally play N18 or O17 to take the three stones or P19. But yeah, this is another forcing move. Zoo wants to see if White's gonna defend the eye. He does. But so now the real big question is: Does Zoo take the three stones and try to kill it? Can he kill after White plays R13? The thing is, after R13, White's threatening S12, so Black has to descend to S12. So um, this wedge is kind of threatening to cut. And then uh, white might play something like R15 or S15 to try to make eyes here, but I'm not sure it's enough for Starstorm. It seems a little bit lacking in shape, but I couldn't say for sure. Um, I'd be very concerned about these pushes also, uh, because Q12, black has to connect. Then after this Atari, of course, white black doesn't have to connect here, but after this Atari, uh, it's a little bit dangerous. Also, if black blocks here, the Atari from N11, and then this wedge will definitely kill either these two or the three stones, so black can't block if he wants to kill white. Um, his option might be to pull back, and then when white Atari is here, it's still difficult. Maybe he pulls back and white pushes and tries to cast a net, but again, this original knight's move cutting Aji is very dangerous for um, block as well. It might have been a bit of an uh, overplay to try to go for the kill here. Not entirely sure. One thing's for certain though, if black hopes a kill he can't block at M11. Or maybe he, maybe his plan is that after he blocks and after N, or sorry, N, M11. But after white Atari's at N11, um, Black could play O11, the counter Atari, and so after White takes, it's still a false eye, so White would have to um, take, and then Black pulls back. Pulls back where, though? Does he pull back to M10 over here? Then after White wedges, so, so Black's going to connect at R11, there's no question about that. After this Atari, White, um, Black blocks to prevent both eyes from making a... Making a uh, making an eye for white. 
if white pushes he'll block, if white peeps, I don't think it matters too much, black can just connect. So yeah, um, it seems like white will try to push. After black blocks, white can take, black probably pulls back, and then it seems like black's all connected. Maybe um, this will be a very quick game and Zoo will secure himself like an easy win. Even if this attack doesn't um, pan out, Zoo is in no means in a bad spot um, because he still has his Ajay in the bottom right and he still gained some profit in the top. <clears throat> the difficult thing for Black though, or for Zoo at this point is this Ajay at L15 or L uh, K15. If White decides to cut across in this wedge and then Black probably extends back. Um, after the Atari at L12, uh, 11, yeah, we can see Starstorm is going for that right now. At the Atari, um, at L11, can Zoo manage his, uh, his three group, his three stones here? It seems a little difficult, but it's possible. Excuse me? Yeah, it seems like Starstorm's last hope is to try to make some sort of play at this Aji with the Knight's move and the Atari here. We'll have to see if it pans out for him though. Hmm. I'm good. I'm glad to see that Bat has so many viewers, and I have one. Not nothing against you, Fia. Fia. Do I know you from Falling Leaves? Hmm. I'll ask you another time. It seems familiar. Hmm. So I think uh, this cut is definitely something um, Zoo has to consider. If Zoo is not going to play the cut, his only other uh, real consideration is playing the Hane on the outside at J15, or backing off. That's a surprising move to me. That that says that um, he's going to let Starstorm connect at L15, and then he's going to try to play a net. Something maybe like H14. Or even looser H13 or tight J14, something like that. It's completely possible, um, I, but you have to be careful of this Atari so now your three stones are even weaker than before when you didn't have this cut. Because before when this... Er, there are benefits and pluses and minuses, right? If you cut, then these three stones have one less liberty. Um, but at the same time, if you don't cut... Uh, it, but at the same time, if you cut, then the one stone is isolated, so it's easier to um, harass it to make shape. Star Storm might be considering uh, whether he can play something besides the connection, right? So maybe he would think K12, but it seems like after black cuts, white cuts, and then black um, has this Atari, after what extends, the cut at K17 becomes pretty uh, viable, right? So white, black can't Atari this way, black has to Atari this one stone to get out, Atari this stone to get out. But that seems possible, um, preserving the ape at the top for black is important, otherwise white can cut in that sequence. Um, if white just connects, then black will probably play J13. I have to read a little bit to see if that actually works. But it seems like the best attacking move. <laughs> if um, if Zoo goes for like J14, a tight net, after white pushes and then pushes again, black has it back off, right? Um, but actually, black white has a better move. If Zoo plays J14, white can push and then play this clamp. Uh, seems pretty difficult for black to kill them because um, the three stones are short of delivery, so they can't cut anymore without dying. I'm not entirely sure why do the stones look different? Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, I turned off the textures. Um, I used to I used to play with the textures on. I didn't know you could turn them off. I kind of like playing without it because the board uh, looks lighter. It has less of the has less texture, right? So the board is brighter to me, and it helped me. Uh, I prefer looking at it like that. Um, if it bothers anyone a lot, I could change it back, but yeah, that's why it's like that. Yeah, so this is pretty much the only move for Zoo to, um, to move out and save his three stones. 
Uh, you can see the benefit of him not cutting is that the L16 uh, space is um, not filled by white, so he doesn't have to worry about anything like a K17 cut. On the other hand, the lack of liberties here doesn't mean um, Starstorm might not be out of it yet. The J14 move looks interesting. Uh, I couldn't say for sure because what I'm looking at is if he white if Starstorm plays J14, uh, Zoo can't hunt it right. If he hunts at H14, then um, I was looking at whether Zoo might pl uh, Starstorm could wedge in at K13. Then if Black blocks and White Ataris, uh, Black takes White connects. Then Black has to worry about this uh, consecutive Ataris. Or connecting, uh, connect and die. I guess it's technically called. And the three stones. He has a connect, and the white pushes, block, push, block. Uh, but then there's these two Ataris at the top, and it seems a little bit dangerous, or kind of actually very impossible <laughs> for white to manage. So um, instead of playing the J14, or if Starson plays J14, uh, Zoo can't hunt it. Zoo will have to come up with a different tactic. Maybe he just has to extend in order to try to seal white in. Uh, these kind of early uh, capturing races are really... Um, yeah, and we see Starstorm's playing that shape now, trying to make use of the shortage of liberties here. You sort of capturing Early capturing races are really difficult to pull off just because there's so much um, room for people to work. Does it quite... No, I, oh, I'm glad you like it. Uh, does what work? Does J14 work? Um, I can say that Zoo can't hunt it at H14. I'm still not sure. Maybe Zoo will play back off at H13. And that's a possibility. Because after that, the wedge um, is a little less severe. Black can just block and after the target, uh, Black won't have to take. Black can just extend and he doesn't have to worry about the J13's dome uh, being as weak. I'm not entirely sure. At my intuition at this point though is that Starsum will find a way to run out, but it could be totally wrong. Um, this is a really big deciding moment for Zoo if he can find a way to capture this group or not. Um, so let's consider if, if Zoo backs off. So usually if you couldn't capture it directly you'd want to try to make a leaning attack, but in this case Zoo doesn't have enough time for that. And Zoo does read um, the H14 move doesn't work so he does back off to H13. And of course, Starstorm's only move is to push. Uh, he could also try to try to attach at J15, but um, that seemed to not be working. Uh, but but now, since the two sins are short on liberties again, maybe this wedge is uh, a possibility again. Uh, the wedge and then block. Uh, <coughs> then white plays J12, threatening K11 Atari uh, snapback. So then after that, um, black has to hunt it out or take. Probably hunt it out is better shape, but taking uh, leaves these two stones in um, shortage of liberties. Seems like wedge, block, uh, cut, t take, Atari, connect, Atari, and then there's an Atari here, but um, if you play this way, uh, white can be cut at, K15, at J15. Um, so of course the best thing for Sartan to do is play uh, the finishing moves first, right, so that way he can adjust the exact order he plays the rest of the moves based on how uh, Zoo responds. This cut, I would have taken more time, I'm not sure, but Zoo might be much better at reading than me. Um, it seems like this wedge though is now a much bigger danger because wedge, block, cut, if you take the Atari, I guess the take is Sente, or it is Atari on these two, uh, but what if Atari here first, wedge, block, Atari, connects, hmm, I guess, it, I guess it does look like this works for Zoo, I am, there's a lot of tricky variations, that'd be, it'd be quite a feat to um, capture a group like this so quickly in the game, I'm quite, I'm actually quite impressed by how well Zoo managed to attack this, I thought um, <coughs> it would actually be quite difficult to manage a kill here but he seems to be doing very it seems very close to working or it might it, it seems like it might it could it is working <sighs> so starstorm if he's not considering this wedge he's considering extending and trying to capture the top which is 
what he's doing. Now Zoo definitely has to defend the weaknesses here. There's too many. <clears throat> I mean, the question becomes whether or not Starsum can kill the top group, right? Um, so typically in this shape you'd want to turn up f16, but then in this case uh, Zoo is pretty happy just to descend to g17 because he can make an easy life. Oh, Starsum's still looking for an I first. Um, I guess it's not a bad exchange because it's if he does live, then Starsum will have made a little bit of uh, profit here. Uh, but it seems, I mean, the zoo is definitely just going to respond to S15 or something, right? Um, and block off the eye making possibilities. And my biggest concern on the upper left for zoo at this point is um, if white if Starstorm plays H17, how does he defend this cut? I guess he could send a G17 after the Atari, these two are an Atari, but then after white cuts, if black, if Zoo comes back to take these, um, it could be get a little dice, it could get a little dicey with this push and cut, and then Starstorm could go after these four stones as a possibility. Uh, it's definitely um, Zoo's game to lose at this point, I think, but whether or not uh, Starstorm has potential to save his group or not is still completely open. I'm a little bit surprised at that. S15 is a lot safer and doesn't leave Starstorm with nearly as much Aji. Uh, attaching here says that Zoo is predicting um, maybe a capturing race uh, with this upper group. And he's saying that he wants to get take away every uh, liberty as fast as possible from White to make sure that in the event of a capturing race he doesn't um, <coughs> fall prey to being short, not having enough uh, liberties. Um, I'm a little surprised though because uh, Starstorm has so many liberties. I, I feel like just taking away one isn't worth the potential um, amount of bad Aji here. But I guess in this case it's not so important. Uh, I couldn't really say though. Uh, yeah, yeah. It seems it seems like it's working. I was a little just caught off guard. But, yeah, it seems like a good move um, for connecting up. So Zoo actually does connect here. He doesn't go for the block. Uh, I guess he's say he feels like the center is too um, weak. He doesn't want to, even if White pushes and cut, like if he descends to G17, which I think is a much easier move to play, <clears throat> if Starsum cuts, it's hard to connect, and Zoo has to come back to take these two stones. Um, he actually doesn't have to come back to take these two stones. He could defend the center. Could could um could Starsum really kill here? You have to start worrying about moves like J18 after that, but white to set black descends. It, it feels like um, black could have lived pretty easily with J17. But maybe Star uh, maybe Zoo saw either he was something in the center was much weaker or something in the top he was not. Uh, completely sure if he could live. I'm not entirely sure what he was um, looking at. So Starsum of course tries to connect up. He's trying to kill this group in order to save the rest of his group. Um, the good and bad thing about this is that um, the group on the right is still as it's still possible to come under attack, and at the current moment, um, Zoo is getting thicker in the center, so it's pretty uh, pretty dangerous. I feel like yeah, now it's very complicated, to, and I can't really say who is uh, going to capture who. Seems pretty tricky. Hmm. Um, so, so Zoo is, if you push here, you're shorting your own liberty, so the only reason you would do this is either, um, if the Atari in the center is important, but it's not, and yeah, of course, this cut at G18, um, it seems, so a quick read says G18, G17, white cuts, then black blocks, white will take the stone, black Atari's, uh, white takes, black has to connect, otherwise this group is too much. But then white has a very good move, right? A K18, the clamp. Although I guess after black descends, uh, white has to prevent uh, black from connecting on the side. Yeah, so then white will descend. 
Um, and it'll be a race capturing race between the inner white group and this black these black stones. Uh, um, in the chat, Jamel is talking about something. I have to talk to him later. Um, how come I'm streaming a game against Jamel? But I'm not playing right- I'm not streaming a game against Jamel, am I? What? I'm not streaming a game against Jamel. I don't think- I'm streaming a game between Zoo and Starstorm. I'm so confused, Nari. Right? Wait. <laughs> I'm a little bit confused. Uh, Nari messaged me saying I'm streaming a game against Jamel, but I don't believe this is Jamel. This is uh, Zoo, Steven Zoo, and Starstorm, also known as Joshua Lee. Um, both very strong players, like 3 4 down level. Uh, Zoo is, um, runs a group on OGS where he hosts weekly lectures, and Starstorm hosts a uh, YouTube series. Um, okay, Nari's less confused, I feel better. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, so they're both reading. So, Starstorm doesn't have to cut a G17, though. The other option is for him to play H18. The benefit is, um, similar to the benefit we saw in the center, it gives him an extra liberty, but at the same time, uh, it gives you the option to connect a G17. The things that Y can consider from there are attaching under at uh, G19, which looks like it'll lead to a Ko, if I'm not mistaken, um, or playing K18. So if white plays H18, black connects, white goes under, black is looking at uh, E18, but then white can play E17, this empty triangle, and when black cuts, he can make a Ko. Even if he doesn't make the Ko, it seems like black might not have... yeah enough eye space I oh oh the well maybe maybe he does there's a, there's another potential co on the right actually um, after the throw in at h19 if you can read that far white takes a j19 and white black can start taking with the liberties from k19 uh, which will lead to a co after m19 and then white blocks and black cuts um, it seems a little bit Uh, difficult for uh, Zoo now, at least in that variation. Starstorm might also have the possibility of playing K18. This starts to look like, um, actually, it starts to look very similar to what Sumigo have done before, but I couldn't say for sure um, who is going to get caught by who, whom. Okay, good luck with your homework, <laughs> Peggy Nari. Um, <coughs> yeah, so I, I don't think. Zoo at this point, he has the option of also playing E18 right away, right? If he plays E18 and Black plays E17, then Black can Atari and capture the stone, uh, thus avoiding the Ko, but uh, you have to be a little careful because then um, if he plays F17, Black connects, Black co connects under, uh, Black is short on liberties to win this capturing race, right? These two stones will get captured before the rest of the stones get captured. It looks pretty dire for Zoo. But maybe he can come up with something that I'm not reading, or people are not reading. The, and definitely, there's a lot of potential for a lot of different moves here, so... Um, it's definitely possible that uh, Zoo can pull something out. There's also maybe black F17, white pulls back. Uh, that doesn't seem too possible, but maybe... I couldn't really say, it doesn't seem... Yeah, I don't feel like this would work. So, hmm, well for me, I'm guessing G17 or E18. Uh, this is a pretty big turnaround, but this often happens when we try to kill groups. Um, if we leave weaknesses, then when the fights spill over, we're short on moves to both defend and keep up our attack. So we run out this problem of both running out of steam, but also have sacrificing a lot for the attack and creating weaknesses for ourselves. I'm not entirely... it seems very difficult um, for Zoo, but maybe he has a way to make it out. I really think that if he had played G17 earlier, it would have been a much simpler game, but maybe there was something there I wasn't reading too. Um, 
Yeah, E18 seems like maybe the best shot at trying to revert it back to the G17 cut position. Um, in which case I think black has a chance of winning. But, yeah, so that's what Zoo's going for. But of course, Starstorm won't play E17 or G17. I feel Starstorm's probably going to play um, F17 directly, which means that Zoo has to connect G17. But this seems like a very one-way street type of pattern. Um... And it looks to me like after uh, white peeps, black blocks, white connects, Atari, then throw in Atari, then Zoo is planning to, planning to play K19, uh, Starstorm has to take the two stones, otherwise his um, whole group at the top dies, and then Zoo is going to try to make a co with M19 as his best shot. Now, uh, these co threats are really difficult because after white takes the co, white takes the co first, and if white takes the co, he'll link up his uh, dead group with the group in the upper left. I feel like, oh, so Starstorm doesn't go for that variation. He goes for, um, to live at the top. In that variation, I thought it was pretty good for white, though, because even if Zoo um, threatens to take these two stones out, uh, his whole group would, you know, Starstorm can live and, t you know, his whole group can live. This way, Starstorm is saying that he can kill this group, like, completely, and that would end the game, whereas before, Zoo uh, did profit a lot from this attack, although, again, we see that S14 doesn't profit as much as S15, but it's a move that is better for the capturing race, because it shortens the liberties. Um, right, so this is a variation we looked at, or I, I mentioned a bit earlier, uh, but I don't know if this is so great for Starstorm. After L19, uh, Starstorm has to block at M19 or something in that area to prevent uh, Zoo from linking up and just killing his group. And after that, uh, Starstorm can play J19. Does uh, and the question becomes whether or not uh, Zoo has enough liberties to live. Also, Zoo can exchange D18 first, right? If oh, that's a very good exchange. That's a very nice exchange. Um, so. Uh, oh, actually that changes a lot. Huh, I didn't consider that. Maybe before playing L19, Zoo should have... Could he have peeped? I, I was reading too fast, but maybe he could have peeped at J19 to um, probe White's response, and then he still goes here. Oh, that's a very nice move. So now Starstorm's alive at the top. Zoo so has to connect at L16, then Starstorm will block at M19. Um, it seems like White doesn't. Uh, White can live at the top. The question then becomes: Can Black? Can Zoo do something to save these stones? He can, of course, peep at E19, F19 exchange, then jump to C18. But he can only really get one eye in the corner. Um, he can also push uh, at D18, then White backs off push and then white ohana it, it it's a very tight situation um on the other hand white doesn't seem to have any lack of liberties though because he can uh, take at 012 so despite zoo playing s14 which is the more liberty shortening move i'd be concerned because 012 takes are you with the eye and this co area um it seems difficult that's a very nice move by zoo does it work? So Zoo is saying if Star is this move, Starstorm wants to play D18, and Zoo will descend. I don't actually know. Do Zoo descends the E19 white connects? Then what? I'm not. I'm not really seeing it. <laughs> uh, Zoo plays C18 next, but then White can just split. Unless he can, he's trying to, white, Zoo needs to capture these stones then. He's kind of trying to carry a capture, so C8, C8, 16, connect, uh, peep at E15, connect, net at C14. <laughs> it seems very um, nebulous to me, or kind of hopeful, wishful kind of play, but I, maybe there's some reading behind it, I can't tell. So descend, connect, uh, block, oh, a tar Oh, I see, I see. That's very that's very clever. He's making um, a co. So if Starstorm plays C18, then what Zoo is going to plan to throw in an F19 and make a co here to live with his group. 
It was actually quite resource resourceful. I didn't consider this. Uh, of course, if Starstorm blocks and Zoo connects, then Starstorm has to connect. Otherwise, uh, Zoo is able to make a double Atari, and Starstorm will have to connect here, and then Z and then Zoo could run out to the top side um, and live with his group, uh, which would kill Starstorm's whole group. This is quite um, a crazy, crazy game. So now we have to consider Zoo is making the first co-threat, but he also has, or Zoo has to make the first co-threat because Starstorm will take. Um, the question is, does Zoo, which, what co-threats are going to Zoo going to play? Maybe he would even consider playing E15 instead of E14 in this case, so he can get one more threat at F14. Um, as for White, White's threats are... are K13 is not really a threat because it opens up the threat of K14. I mean, K14 is a threat too, but it opens up the threat of K12. These are kind of um, nobody's threats. Whoever makes the first threat gives the threat, so it cancels the threat out. Uh, but of course, now we're seeing a little bit why S14 is uh, bad AG for Sue. It's the more aggressive move, but now um, Starstorm has a lot of threats pushing at R14. Black has to back off, pushing again. Blocking, cutting. This is like this is four threats. Whereas before, if it was a uh, S15, maybe Starstorm's only threat would be R15 or something. We're seeing a lot of that bad Aji come into play. I'm not entirely sure if um if they go for the Ko, that Zoo can win it. But it is a very uh, tight game. Yeah, it's all one huge life and death problem. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. I I'm pretty sure that Starstorm has to go for the Ko here. If he doesn't go for the Ko, uh, okay. Really? Starstorm doesn't want to play the Ko, so now he's saying if Zoo plays C18, connect, connect, that he can kill the corner before this whole group dies. Which is quite possible, but what if Zoo can manage it without that? What if he Atari's connects and peeps first? Then. Oh, maybe there isn't away because it's one extra liberty. Hmm, it's really really tight. Uh, I am very worried if, I'm, I'm not sure if, uh, how this, how this is gonna go. I, my reading says Zoo will get one eye in the corner and then it's a capturing race between these two groups, which I guess is better for the S14 stone, but I mean, Zoo has to spend an extra move at P19, right? Because to fill in these liberties, um, you have to take a P19, otherwise you're an Atari. Then there's this Ko kind of shape that uh, Starstorm can make too. Uh, it seems really, really tough. But maybe there is um, something that can be done. Is there a possible push at C16, and then if the cut, some sort of squeeze, some sort of a t thing you can do beforehand? Doesn't really seem like it that you could make the cut not sente. Uh, this is really, really quite difficult. Yeah, so this is the obvious move to just reduce the corner eye space. Um, if seems like Zoo is short on liberties, but it might change. Uh, if he wants to try to capture me, oh, okay, so he's pushing here. Oh, is there a... Oh, no, no, this... Okay. So, so sometimes you can push and cut and sacrifice the two, but in this case, um, Zoo is liberty short from doing that, which would have been a very, very good exchange. Very, um, strong comeback for Starstorm. Um, I have a feeling Zoo just has to put, has to block. I'm not even sure what the best way here to play is. Because eventually when White fills in these stones, this Atari, so White has to connect. It's pretty tough, and I don't know how Zoo can best get liberties. Oh, he's just going straight for this capturing race. I guess that is, uh, the most logical way to approach it. Zoo has, you know, these three liberties. He has to make use of them before get filled in and he doesn't have time to try to capture this whole group over here. Um, at the same time though, 
uh, this kind of play is very crazy, <laughs> to say lack of a better word. Um, you know, Starstorm might connect at C16, then he's aiming at playing B18, which Zoo can't allow, so Zoo would have to block at B17. Then there's this peep at B19, uh, is kind of concerning, it's a really damaging shit move, but maybe Zoo has time to play B15 to try to capture this group first. It's really hard to say, um... who's going to come out ahead. I feel like, actually after seeing this move, I hadn't thought about it. But, um, it, the chances of killing this group are not as uh, low as I thought. It's pretty remarkable. I'm actually, like, Zoo's fighting strength is very, very strong. I've played him before a few times, um, and every time there's a fight, I get kind of destroyed, or his reading is very strong. Every time there's a fight, um, he does very well, and we either go even or he wins, so I never very rarely get the better hand of him. Uh, his sometimes gets over aggressive, though, as we could have, as we saw a little bit earlier. But, um, which is, yeah, I get some lucky wins, but generally he, he's very strong. I've never played Starstorm before, so I have no idea how he, um, if he normally plays this way, but it feels like. Zoo's the one who was uh, picking a fight here, so he didn't have much choice except to fight back. Um, I don't know what's going on in chat. Jamel and T TP are uh, discussing something. <laughs> something about Jamel's brother. Um, wow, this is super aggressive. I would have expected... Uh, you know, the normal move is to block at C13, and white go extends down or something. And that seemed good and maybe okay-ish, I couldn't really advance. Um, B17? Yeah, maybe B17 I thought earlier, but uh, that would have been the losing way. This is a very sharp move. It's um, Starstorm is now very short on liberties, but at the same time, uh, after Zoo blocks if white plays b13 he can't take because of this atari right or can he black, 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 black. Um, he couldn't uh, kill the group but he could play some f uh, really strong forcing moves to try to live but it seems maybe not <laughs> um, because if he had if zoo had played like c13 and starstorm played c15 zoo would have much preferred to play b13 than c b14 even though b14 takes away liberties it opens up a lot of bad uh for him right because now starstorm i would almost assume would either would i cut at b13 you don't want to push first um or that i guess in any case, you don't want to push first because then after the cut, um, there's the counter Ataris that could help Zoo uh, live in the top. I am... Man, this is crazy. This is a crazy game. Um, so Zoo, if he Ataris on top, white Ataris he extends, then then uh, Starstorm has no choice but to capture the stone, but Starstorm can at least live. And it seems like... Um, if we revert back to that capturing race between the top group and this group on the right, um, but it seems in that case pretty easy, pretty easy for uh, it, it, my intuition is that Starstorm would win that race. Um, one thing I have to take note of though is Starstorm is trying to hit Bioyomi. He's only had 15, 13 seconds left before um, he runs out of time, but. Well, this, uh, Zeus still has a few minutes, so he can at least take his time to read the situation out. Um, okay, so Star Storm. Actually, I'm a little surprised he took here. I would have expected to extend. Now, yeah, now um, Star Storm can extend to B12. Uh, and his group is alive now, so it seems difficult for Zoo to play from here. Unless Zoo can try to go for a counterattack on, on the bottom right. If he can kill this group, it's possible for him to make up the loss of the top, but otherwise, um, it's pretty difficult. Wow, that's a really severe uh, attachment. But 
Um, it doesn't actually cut white, does it? Because after white plays O7, uh, even if black tries to run out at Q7, which is what we're seeing now, white can just Atari f from Q6. So this doesn't. This move doesn't actually cut white. If I think if Zoo wanted to cut, he should have pressed that O7, pushed in at O7 first. Um, at this point, since since Starstorm managed to make his counterattack and kill the top, it seems pretty difficult for Zoo to. Uh, come back here. But he's playing it on, so let's see what happens. Um, whoops. I don't know if that did anything. It says wedge and then connect. Um, now Starstorm's even making some eye shape threatening S6 and P5. It's a very standard but strong way to make life. Uh, at this point, it starts from just play solidly. It seems like he has a very comfortable game. He could even consider running L11 out later and attacking this group too, because this isn't entirely solid either. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't seem. It seems very difficult at this stage for Zoo to come back. Right, because this has three, two, three, four, five, six liberties, and this has a ton. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe ten, eleven, ten and a half with a co. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I, yeah, Starstone just is running out. He doesn't want to get into another fight. He's saying, I just, I have my points at the top. I don't need to fight anymore. If he, if the rest of the game nothing, he doesn't get into any trouble, then Zoo doesn't have any chances. Um, so, pretty comfortable game for Zoo. Zoo's peeping. He's basically going all out to try to make a comeback by attacking this, but a pretty risky strategy. Um, on the other hand, it is true that Starstorm only has one eye, but when you have when you have the rest of the board to run to, and uh, you know there are some weaknesses here. Maybe he can even try to make a local eye. You know, T10 is a is a pretty strong move, aiming at T12 to connect under. As long as it doesn't, um, you know, as long as Starsum doesn't need the T13 liberty to capture this, this uh, I think T10 actually uh, threatens, is basically life, right? T10, T11, then uh, maybe, yeah, then blocking, and then after white comes in, though, you can Atari, and then Atari... Uh, maybe maybe not quite maybe not quite um, alive yet. Hmm. Have to relook it. I guess I guess that doesn't quite work. But Zoo is definitely pressing the attack. He um. I'm not sure where he can try to make some points in the center, but Starstorm, you know, he has a very solid position, and the top is there's nothing left to be done. I don't really know what to say at this point because we have to just look and see how um, how he's going to manage the rest of the group. I feel like um, I feel like there's a lot of potential. I would I'm a little surprised. Starstorm's blocking here. I mean, it's true that. Uh, the cut at L5 isn't really c clearly going to work because of net and splitting plays at N4, but I'm a little surprised that he would even block here. I guess he didn't want he didn't want to give any po you know he wanted to play perfect. Um, you know, just turning at L5 would have been fine. If block comes in, then you just take the stone and you're totally fine. Um, excuse me, I'm really really tired. <laughs> I don't know why my eye is itchy. So at this point, Starstorm could just connect. Um, even though he gives Black some points, this this is so big. You know, Black has this corner and this corner in the center a little bit, but is that enough to really compete with? How many stones is this? Three, four, five, uh, ten, fifteen, seventeen, seventeen dead stones, thirty-four points, and then all the uh, other empty spaces. And I'm not sure that um, that's enough. Uh, this peep is interesting. It it could be a good move. It could be not be a good move. Um, you only play, Starstorm would only you'd only play this move if you thought that for some reason later 
If you played this move later that black would answer differently, which is true, black would probably block at N3. I feel like even though Zhu does want Starstorm to connect at L6, is it really worth... What? Is it really worth um, leaving this cutting potential? And Starstorm is saying he wants his points. He doesn't he doesn't think Zoo can cut at L L5. If he does cut, then what's the plan? Zoo Hana's N2 block push, and you can't block because uh, this Atari. Am I miss? Am I missing something? Wait, <laughs> I'm so confused. So cut. I guess if you cut, then this bamboo joint threatens to cut the bottom and make a second eye here. So it's fine. It's a really strange way to make a second eye, but it makes a second eye. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the K2 move was about. I think Zhu was hoping he'd play L2, then he could get M2 and Sente. Uh, this move does defend the cut at the bottom. Um, so Starstorm probably should defend here now. Uh, th they're both showing a lot of fighting spirit, but whether or not it's actually too beneficial, I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, we will see, however, how it continues. I really hope... I mean, we can tell from this game alone that Star, uh, that Zoo is putting up a... You know, they're both f showing a lot of fighting spirit and... I know there's a guy, there's a viewer in my room named Tartrate, but I know he is not the real Tartrate. I am 99% sure. Wow, Starsum really isn't, um, defending this cut. Uh, so let's see what he thinks is going to happen. If Zoo cuts, Starstorm wants to take, and this counter Atari uh, is what Zoo is aiming at. Um, so Starstorm wants can't cut right, can't cut here right away. He probably wants to play this bamboo joint. Um, if Zoo defends this point, man, I feel like I'm missing something. If Zoo defends this connection after that, then jumping down here doesn't work, and jumping down. The other way? Yeah, I guess jumping down to N2 cuts and kills black. Uh, okay, so that's what they're aiming at. Zoo can still develop this area quite well. Um, although, I guess he's really trying to look for any sort of Aji or kind of um, little thing he can exploit with these attachments. Uh, but it seems, you know, these are kind of desperation plays at this point. I don't think, um, you know, he he's trying to get any little Aji that he can use to swing the game or look for a weakness. But Starstorm is going to play very solidly, and as you can see, his reading is very um, immaculate. You know, even leaving this cut open and jumping down, very solid. Uh, this is a very solid move, too. Starstorm saying, you know, there is some Aji here. He wants to fix it up. And even though Zoo can move, make moves towards the corner, um, he, Zoo's going to lose points in the center, so it's not that big a deal for him as well. <clears throat> um, so we shall see how this continues from here. Zoo's playing this attachment. I'm not sure if... Uh, so of course Starstorm could let him have a corner type, but no, Starstorm's going to pick a fight again. He's saying, you know, I'm not going to give you any, any, any leeway. Uh, so, okay, I, you know, these there is a lot of points to be gained here, and Zoo isn't perfectly alive, but now this cut is a much bigger issue, because even though the cut, um, you know, White can live here, uh, living here would be in Gote, so after this cut, this group at the bottom could be in danger, but actually Starstorm, um, you know, he's perfect completely on the attack, in a way, or is he just looking for the most simple way to connect up and solidify his groups? I'm not entirely sure. Oh, has he really? I didn't know that. Starts from getting training at the Yungsung Dojo Dojang online. It's um, I've heard really good things about it. I've never, uh, you know, I've never signed up myself, but I've heard really good things about it. Um. This cut is pretty sharp, but uh, mm, 
He's still aiming at this cut, I guess. Right? He wants to try to get some strong here somehow. I'm a little bit Well this this cuts a natural follow-up to F3. That's um how it goes. Because uh Star Zoo wants him to Atari um at D2 so he can Atari and then connect. Or cut here and then connect cut here so they can attack these stones and try to make a comeback. Um Starts from the tarring. How is Zoo going to respond? He can play, he can extend out, but then Starts from just going to tar from the bottom and extend. And I guess he could run out that way though. No, no, Zoo just runs out this way. This fight is, uh. It's kind of weird. It, this is a very um, big fight, but in comparison to what's already, already happened, uh, I don't know if it's. That's significant. So, like, this was uh, 34 points plus the extra stuff here. Fox territory at the moment, he has 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Or, sorry, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. He has like 44, 45, and then the center. 45 ish points plus the center, and then this corner alone is 34, 6, 8, 10, so 40, 40 something points. Comey alone makes the game close, and then I guess, um, you know, this White has points here and points at the bottom. At least, you know, 10 extra points. Oh, so he did play this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this the bamboo joint cut, and then White's group is completely alive. Um, the benefit is that Black got to separate this group over here, but after these exchanges, White is, um, pretty okay. I, I thought. And so I thought white would just Atari under and black comes out. I guess um, you know after this exchange white can just play d2. He's totally safe. Even if black lives here he doesn't have enough to compensate with these extra points on the left. And you know white does gain points in these areas as well. <coughs> uh, if Zoo really wants to attack, I guess he could play D2, but, you know, there's so much eye shape here. There's an eye here already. There's an eye here. There's not really much you can hope for that. Hmm. You're pretty well connected, Fia, if you know Starstorm's been getting training. Um, yeah, it, it looks like the game is wrapping up into its later phases. Um, I get, there is always a chance though that some player will make a mistake. Starstorm is and only has two Bioyo me periods left. So you never know what might happen. Um, but he's holding on to a pretty solid, you know, ten, little over ten point lead. Um, even if uh, Zoo runs out at G4, um, Starstorm can also squeeze with uh, G5 too. So there, I don't, I don't really know much else. What else is going on? Um, Star Storm, uh, Zoo could try to wrap up some points in the center, but is it enough to uh, compensate for the upper left and all these extra points? I don't know. But if he was aiming for the center, he wouldn't have made these kind of exchanges like C8, um, which completely damaged his own, like push White towards um, the center. So he can't really aim for points there. Um, <coughs> it seems a little difficult for Black at this stage. Oh, you're in it too. I see, I see. Yeah, I've heard it's a very good program. I really, um, when I have more, when I had more, uh, if I had more time, like, consistent time to invest, um, into a dojo like that, I would probably do it. Uh, yeah, so Starstorm just consolidates his lead. He knows he's not going to really try to kill this group. And even if it just runs out, um, Zoo doesn't have enough points to uh, come back. Um, Starstorm can squeeze here. Yeah, that's probably p the pretty normal sequence. Uh, this move at F9, moving in and capping is pretty big too, um, if he can get that later. Um, Zoo could consider, I guess, if the game was 
closer playing g6, sacrificing the 3, and then trying to jump up uh, <coughs> maybe f10-ish to take a huge center. And that might um, swing the game pretty close. I still feel like Starstorm would hold like a small, maybe 5 point lead. Uh, and that actually maybe. Mm, let's see, how big would the center be? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and like 36 points. Yeah, like the game could get pretty close if he was somehow able to consolidate the whole thing. Zoom moves back to the upper left. Um, <laughs> it would be really hilarious if, uh, you know, this capturing race was a move off the whole entire game, but we'll we'll have to see just how that goes. I don't. B nineteen is a very good move for breaking the shape of of uh, of black. Um, but at the same time, white has to fill in these liberties anyway to, you know, fill black in. And B nineteen doesn't threaten directly to cut because it's not a tar yet. So I'm not sure. Um, if it was the most necessary way to play. But I guess it is um, the easiest way. Oh, this actually could get pretty close now because um, since white decided to take here, the descent at A14 could threaten a shortage of liberties on these groups when white moves to attack. So Zoom might actually get a little bit of extra breathing room. Um, but he's still pretty far behind in the liberty race, so I don't feel like it'll make a big enough difference. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry the stream is acting up. Um, I don't know why. Is it? Is it on my end? Or I thought you said that maybe it was a little buggy with uh, on Duran's stream too, but hmm. I'm sorry it's acting up. I don't really know how I can fix that. <clears throat> yeah, so, so, um, he descends. Actually, wait, uh, well now B19 is a very good move to have, because otherwise, um, Zoo could have played this throw in Ko and then B19 to live. Uh, if, if that move wasn't there. Um, I don't know if C16 was necessary. It fills in his own liberties, but at the same time, I guess, um, there aren't too many choices. I don't think there's anything left for Zoo to try. Yeah, and he runs out of time. Um, but it was a very, at least the beginning was a very, uh, you know, quite exciting and stressful fight going on. Like, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> um. Zoo almost. I don't know. Yeah. That was a pretty crazy fight. I still feel like maybe um, G17 would have worked. I think the players are going to review the game now, so we can see what their thoughts are before moving to our own. Um, own review. Yeah, yeah, P10 is a very easy, clean move. Um. To reduce the top. Yeah, that's probably the easiest way for Star Storm to play. Uh, that's um, also reviewing on his stream if you want to watch there, and he's going to call Star Storm to see. Uh, I'm going to clone this game, and then I wanted to see something myself. Um, does this game show up though? I'm still in the other room. There we go. So. I felt like there was a certain not I don't want to go to the end, but there's a certain point um <coughs> whoops after this that I thought maybe he had a chance before this. I thought maybe um Zoo could have played here. Uh but I'd have I wasn't sure on my reading completely. Yeah, it's a really intense game. Because uh, if white can Atari is in this connection and then Bach can just defend, it, I'm not entirely sure if this kills or not. I guess it does. Not sure. 
No, this looks like what like a uh, black wins this fight. Um, what if you go here? Black's alive. Descend directly, then descend, then here. Um, there's a possibility. Um, but I guess yeah, I guess this this is uh, a danger for black. So then the other the other thing is you know if you just take the stone here. Is this fight really so bad for you? Trying to... can white capture these? I felt like at least this way, um, black had a much... had a, chan a, a better chance of killing. You know, it's not entirely clear how... what if white can kill these in time. Or just kill them in general, right? Um, but... Uh, I couldn't really say. It, it was a really, really close and lots of reading intensive game. I am surprised that Zoot decided to connect here, but... I guess that's how it goes. I was also thought it would be pretty... I guess if you read up that there's a killing sequence, it's better than the code that I was reading. Um, is there a better way for Black to play here? Black could peep, perhaps? Uh, but white just connects. But white still just can make this exchange, right? It doesn't really change much. Black is still dead. Yeah. Really intense fighting game. Um, and also this point, too. I wasn't sure. I guess this cut was best. Yeah, I feel like... This peep. I would at least go this way to try to, you know, make shape. I guess this is a really big danger though. What if you go this way? You can't really save everything, right? You go this way and it's, um, white still kills the two to live. So maybe you have to spend a move here. But I don't know if this fight is really so bad. It's still pretty, um, you know, you can't really net right away. White has a, these stones are separated. White would have to go from this direction. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I couldn't say, but I feel like, you know, there's, not there, but, you know, there's still a lot of room to maneuver for black. If he could find life, then the game could turn around, or just enough liberties. Okay. Well, that was a very exciting game. So, thank you for watching. I the next round of the Creator tw 2015 Creator Invitational is this Saturday. There'll be a thread on the Go subreddit or Baduk subreddit. Um, I presume I am assuming that the rounds will be at 4 p.m. again, but I have to make sure with all the players that that's okay. <clears throat> um, but. Yeah, that was a very exciting game, and really, really strong fighting. So, um, tune in, yeah, on Saturday to watch, and that should be pretty, it should be pretty great. The bracket, I sh um, the brackets for this Saturday, the games are going to be played, uh, is going to be Justin Tang. Otherwise known as Oddness uh, versus myself, D um, Diamond, and then there's also uh, there's going to be oh well first there's um, and there's going to be four rounds but I don't know if we're going to play all four on the weekend again like last time there might be scheduling problems but uh, it'll be myself against Oddness and Jerry Shen versus Joshua Lee. Uh, Sh Jerry is a very strong young player and Joshua, as you saw, Starstorm is a very strong fighting player. Um, the, in the losers bracket, we'll have Monk versus Clausius. Uh, Monk pl actually put up a very good fight against Oddness last week, uh, despite the rank difference. And then Clausius, uh, I kind of stole a win off him, but he's a very strong player, so you should look forward to that game. And then in the losers, the other losers bracket game, we have Zoo against Jermel. Jermel, I'm not entirely sure will be, unfortunately, playing or not. Um, but I hope he will play. 
So yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you for watching. I hope it was entertaining, and I hope um, you all enjoyed watching it. Who's for? Who's four down five down? I know. Um. Wait, who's four down five down on tie game? I know Jerry Shad is like four or five down, and I'm like five six down on tie game. Colossus is four down on KGS, which is um a lot stronger than four down on tie game. <clears throat> I, I don't I don't know who, who you meant. Sorry, I didn't see the comment in time with what I was saying. Uh, but yeah, I, I hope it was fun to watch and that these are exciting games. As, actually, I, I feel like these have been very exciting from what we've seen. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching. Oh yeah, J Jerry's Jerry's a very strong player. Yeah, I, I'm actually kind of surprised he's 4-down, 5-down. Um, <laughs> hey, Monk. Uh, maybe I'll stream after dinner, Monk. But for now, I'm ending for the tournament game that I was sort of casting. And yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Uh, hope to see you again. Bye.